Hey guys, how you doing? So welcome to chapter 10. Uh, in this chapter, we are going to look at asexual reproduction, uh, which uh, encompasses looking at uh, what sex is in a biological sense and then how organisms evade that process and use asexual reproduction. Um, and then we're going to also look at uh, the uh, concept of cloning and how cloning works. Okay, um, so let's jump into it. Okay. So asexual reproduction. Now, uh, before we actually look at what asexual reproduction is, we need to define the word sex. So what is sex? Okay. Now, the casual term for it is we're obviously referring to sexual activity or intercourse. Um, there is a biological term, uh, which is obviously referring to biological sex, male and females, the two main categories that most mammals and animals will fall under. Um, and then there is also sex in terms of the reproduction or sexual reproduction, yeah, being the production of new organisms, organisms by combining genetic information from two individuals. That is, uh, there is this sense of genetic information being combined for two organisms to give rise to a new type of organisms. Okay? So in this particular definition, you have two parents that make one offspring. Okay? Um, or perhaps multiple offspring if you want to talk about twins. Uh, and there's also two different types of sex cells. Yeah? A male gamete or a sperm uh, will combine with a female gamete, such as an egg, to form a new type of cell that is different from both parents. Okay? So the offspring are genetically different. Yeah? Genetically different being the key outcome of sexual reproduction. Yeah? That the genes are different from what they were before because there's this chop and change and recombining from the gametes. Yeah? Now, what do we mean by gametes? A gamete is is a sex cell. In animals, that is uh, the sperm and the egg. A gamete in plants is referring to uh, a pollen um, and an ovule. Yeah? The pollen is actually the kind of plant sperm, so to say, and the ovule is the uh, plant egg. So those things are called gametes. Okay? Now, uh, so in uh, asexual reproduction then, um, asexual reproduction is when a new organism is uh, produced from only one parent organism. Yeah, there's only one parent organism being involved in that reproduction of a new organism. And so what happens is the offspring is not uh, any different. It's genetically identical to the parent. Yeah, so we call the new cells or the clones as daughter cells or daughter clones uh, to the parent. Yeah, so, um, and there's different ways in which organisms can reproduce asexually. So in prokaryotes, organisms that don't have a nucleus like bacteria and archaea and things like that, um, they can produce asexually through a process called binary fission. Uh, we've already talked about binary fission in the previous chapter, uh, but it's nice just to highlight it again so that you are aware of the process, and I'll go through it again as well. Um, now, in eukaryotes, that is the rest of us, um, with uh, you know, organisms or cells with a nucleus, uh, asexual reproduction can happen through mitosis. So we've already learned about mitosis again, uh, but um, that's how eukaryotes can reproduce asexually. Okay? So here are some of the features. So uh, in terms of number of parents and parental contributions, you can already see the difference there. In asexual reproduction, you only need one parent. In sexual reproduction, you need two. Um, and so the process involved um, is binary fission and mitosis in um, asexual reproduction. And for sexual reproduction, it is what a process called meiosis, which you are going to learn about in the next chapter. Yeah? Um, fertilization does not occur in asexual reproduction, but it is uh, present in sexual reproduction. The gametes need to combine, and the egg needs to be fertilized by the sperm in order for it to be asexual, uh, for it to be sexual reproduction, okay? Um, the offspring are genetically identical or clones of the parent in asexual and are genetically different from the parents and from each other in sexual reproduction, yeah? The rate of offspring production is faster in an asexual reproductive uh, system uh, compared to a sexually reproductive system, okay? Now, uh, advantages and disadvantage, you can sort of see there uh, with only one parent, a quick uh, process without involving um, egg and sperm, um, the advantages of asexual reproduction is that it's fast. Yeah, Because it's fast, an organism that reproduces asexually can populate uh, uh, and repopulate quickly. Um, you only need one parent. You don't need to look for the other mate. Um, and, you know, for example, for plants, you don't need pollen and vectors like bees and, and things like that to distribute the pollen. Yeah, And so, um, 
in asexual reproduction, it's a very quick process. Every member in the population can reproduce um, compared to in sexual reproduction where you need both, um, both in members to join together in order to reproduce. Um, and asexual reproduction can be very favorable in stable and predictable conditions where it's optimized for an organism to reproduce at a rapid rate, okay? Now, some of the disadvantages, uh, so, you know, everything comes with a cost. Uh, there is no genetic or very little genetic variation. The only genetic variation you can get is if um, the cells uh, or the organisms um, have some sort of mutation uh, while they are going through the process of asexual reproduction. It also means that um, it's difficult in unpredictable, unstable conditions because of the changes, uh, the rapid changes that occur in those environments, um, organisms can't reproduce as rapidly, yeah? Which means um, if the condition changes rapidly, uh, asexual reproduction is unable to adapt. Um, it also means that individuals um, are susceptible to disease because there's no genetic variation, okay? Okay, I want to talk about bananas. So why am I talking about bananas? Uh, because bananas will give us a good understanding of how asexual reproduction works and also how asexual reproduction has a particular role of importance in our lives, particularly in the area of livestock and agriculture. Okay, so this is what a banana tree looks like. This is what a banana looks like. Yeah, nothing new here. Um, but did you know that these bananas have a name? So these bananas here are actually what we call the gross Michael bananas. Um, and they look like an average banana that you would often expect. They're a little bit smaller um, than the ones that you and I tend, uh, tend to buy now, but these bananas here were the most dominant type of banana that was being exported um, all the way uh, up until the 1950s, yeah? And the way that they grew these bananas was that each of these trees, um, they would take a cutting from, or an offshoot from one of these trees, and they would plant it in next to it, right? And so they would plant it uh, by putting these cuttings in. Now these cuttings or these offshoots are a form of asexual reproduction. You're taking the same parent, the same one uh, parent, and you're taking a segment of that organism and planting it into the ground. That segment grows into a new individual with its own set of roots, own set of leaves and, and, and things like that, and it forms a new offspring, okay, a daughter plant, if you would, okay. So that is a form of asexual reproduction. It's a very simple form because you're just cutting one segment of the plant, putting it into a new area, and that becomes a new plant which grows new bananas. Now, what that means is that this tree here is genetically identical to this tree here, right? Um, and so the bananas that come out of this tree genetically will be identical to the bananas coming out of this tree. And so these bananas that you see here are all genetically identical, yeah? And it's a very quick method of cultivating bananas en masse, and then you can import them or export them uh, to different countries and so forth, okay? Now, uh, up until the 1950s, it was kind of going well, and then uh, they encountered a problem. So what they have found was that uh, there was this disease um, that grew in the shoots of these bananas. So you can sort of see this browning of the stem comes because of a disease, a particular fungus that infected the root of the plant called the Panama disease, yeah? The Panama disease um, was ridiculous. It was, uh, it just eliminated such massive um, populations of bananas um, and, you know, um, plantations everywhere were just falling left, right and center because of this particular Panama disease, yeah? And so it created one of the biggest banana blight that we've ever seen. Um, the banana industry sort of just collapsed uh, pretty much overnight around about the 1950s um, and everyone was faced with a banana shortage because all of the uh, supply of these bananas were being infected by this fungus, okay? If you would open up your bananas, that's what you would see, right? Uh, this banana being kind of this kind of grossish, kind of moldy uh, looking banana on the inside. And so, um, farmers had massive problems with these plantations and these problems. And so what they did was they had to then change over to a new strain of bananas. Um, so you can see there the same advantage, the quick growth, the rapid uh, division and, and my, the cuttings. Um, it, on the flip side presented this problem of a disease comes along and wipes out the whole population because there's no genetic variation, okay? Um, so what scientists did was they came up with a new strain. Yeah, so this banana probably looks a little bit more familiar to you and I because it's called the Cavendish banana, yeah? The Cavendish banana uh, began uh, in 2009 
and currently it is about 47% of all the banana exports in the world. So it's the majority in Australia. In fact, every banana you eat in Australia is pretty much virtually identical to every other banana that you eat that is a Cavendish banana. Yeah. So um, now this Cavendish banana has a resistance to the Panama disease. Yeah. Uh, and so there's this advantage of now the your new strain of banana being um, able to survive the disease and grow in these particular areas and once again um, uh, the farmers did the same thing so they, they cultivated these bananas using offshoots of, ex of ex existing trees um, and so each existing plantation is identical to every other one yeah and so you get these kind of beautiful looking bananas that are now resistant to the Panama disease now you might ask okay well what have uh, we learnt during this time? Well, it turns out we've learned absolutely nothing from that because uh, recent uh, discoveries have uh, sort of been made that these Cavendish bananas are actually susceptible to what we call the black um, cigatoka disease. Now this uh, black cigatoka disease is similar to the Panama disease in that it affects the roots um, and it's also a fungus um, and it is now creating issues along um, you know, plantations of Cavendish bananas around the world. Um, we haven't learned anything. We've used the same method on the same, um, you know, on a different uh, strain of bananas to try and make it resistant. Why? Because um, there is a growing demand for bananas, and so they need a rapid method of reproducing the bananas. Yeah, um, and so scientists will predict that soon, you know, the Cavendish um, population is going to drop and 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 kind of flatten out, and then uh, we're going to have to look for a new strain of bananas. Uh, to replace these ones. So you can sort of see there a good example of how asexual reproduction presents both um, advantages to uh, us uh, and also disadvantages um, as well, presenting problems in our economy. Yeah? Um, now, so that, that's the kind of idea of or the challenge of uh, asexual reproduction. Uh, we're going to look at how different organisms will use um, asexual reproduction to their advantage. Um, we've already talked about binary fission, uh, but binary fission occurs in prokaryotes, organisms without a nucleus. Um, and so all prokaryotes, all bacteria and archaea will use binary fission as a means of reproduction. Okay? It's a lot simpler than the eukaryotes. Um, it takes much less time. On average, about 20 minutes or so to divide from parent into two daughter cells. And it presents an exponential form of growth. Yeah, one becomes two within 20 minutes. After 40 minutes, you've got four. After 60 minutes, you've got eight. After 80 minutes, you've got you know uh, 16, and, and then it continues to grow and so forth and so forth um, until it reaches a carrying capacity or a maximum amount. Okay. Um, Basically, the same thing happens. Um, the chromosomes will duplicate, and then uh, you have a breaking of a the cell wall, um, and then the the cell just pinches into two, um, and the, sorry, the, the breaking of the plasma membrane and cell wall, and then it pinches into two, and you've got your two bacteria there. Yeah. So we've already talked about sort of how this forms. It's a less complicated version of mitosis, um, and it happens at a much more rapid rate. 